Welcome to our third instalment of Crucible Catch-Up. With me is Neil Goulding to look over the papers and some of the stories from the third day of action here in Sheffield. Neil, I've got your article here, haunted the headline for John Higgins. Whoever would have predicted that going out to Mark Davis? I know Davis beat him at the UK Championship, but this is a stage on which Higgins tends to shine. You'd think Higgins would do a lot better, but unfortunately, Rob, he just didn't perform yesterday. He's had a problem with his Q all season. He said as well in York, he, he lost to him in the UK Championship, so it wasn't as big a surprise in the press corps as what a lot of people outside would have, have uh, imagined. But he um, he just didn't perform and he's had a terrible season. Shanghai September, he won the Shanghai Masters from 7-2 down. After this, he's done nothing all season, which is a shame. I wrote for a lot of Scottish papers and all my sports editors are telling me what's happened to John Higgins. I mean, disappointment north of the border because, of course, Graham Dot managed to come through an epic against Peter Ebden, but Higgins has been the talisman for a long time for Scottish snooker since Stephen Hendry sort of uh, mm. had the end of his glory days. He has, and I think it's probably catching up with him. He's always been the man, the last man in the, in the tournament. He's won all the titles. He said himself in his press conference yesterday that the strain, getting older, it's not as easy. The pressure's still there. But then Mark Davis kind of rolled back the years as well. Yesterday it was interesting, he's 40 and he's playing the best snooker of his life. So no wonder John's a little bit confused. He's been there, but, it, you know, class is permanent, but his form at the moment is just not very good. Let's go back on to Graham Dot against Peter Ebden. That was an absolute epic. They resumed yesterday 6-2 down. I think I made some comment in my intro that Peter Ebden's dug himself out of holes before. Can he do it again? Well, he almost did and, and, and forced the two of them to come back very late on yesterday. That was a real test of Graham Dot's stamina. I think so, and I think Graham probably expected it. Even at 6-2 up, he knew that Peter wouldn't give up. He is a, he is a grinder, fairly or, or wrongly. That's the sort of... It just works very hard. He's not going to lose a match. Uh, and you said it yourself, it was an epic. And they came on very late and we were all worried here that it was going to go into midnight. Unfortunately, it's been labelled their matches since the 2006 World Final as being a slow play. But Peter has every right to grind it out and win a match. And, and if his opponent can't take it on the big stage, that's unfortunate. But um, yeah, one hell of a match. One hell of a match. Let's talk a little bit about Graham Dot because sometimes his accolades and the achievements he's, he's produced here are, are overlooked a little bit. I mean, he's been in three finals in the last nine years. He's a great player. He is, and he usually saves his best hit. Most people forget that he's been in two finals and lost, and he's come up against Ronnie O'Sullivan. You know, it's very hard to win them. And that 2006 final, there wasn't a great, I think his highest break was 68, but after 17 days of competition, he was absolutely exhausted. He's a, he's a battler, he's a great player, and he's also gone through a lot. He's had depression, come back from that. He's fighting his own demons. Yeah, he probably doesn't get the respect he deserves. Well, he's into the next round, as is Mark King. Now, a lot of people are always very excited when Mark Allen takes to the table because he had a great run to the semis four years ago, and, and he's an explosive and exciting player to watch. So that was another upset and a big win for Mark King towards the end of the season. Definitely, and Mark King is, a, is one of these sort of players who, again, probably doesn't get the credit he deserves, but he's here, he's been in the top 16 for a long time. That was a great win from last night. Mark Allen, by his own admission, didn't play very well. Uh, but for him to go, we've lost Mark Williams, we've lost John Higgins now. The seeds are falling, it just shows the pressure playing here at the Crucible. It's very, very hard. Uh, just finally, Neil, we know that Ronnie's in the top half of the draw and the tournament isn't all about him, but of course there's huge excitement because he's coming back from the 11-month layoff. Do you see that top half of the draw opening up for the Rocket now that Higgins has gone? Very much so, yeah, and no disrespect to someone like Ali Carter, who Ronnie would probably play in the next round. Ronnie's had the better of Ali over the years. And he'll fancy the job now. He's not going to probably he's not going to play obviously John Higgins in the quarterfinals, which was the match of the heavyweights for this tournament. And yeah, I think you know Ronnie would be fancying it. He's he's really no disrespect to any other players, but the semi-final match would be the game. He could play a Murphy or a Dot. That's when it's really going to see whether he can cope under the pressure in the long matches. So it's brilliant. We're all looking forward to it. The Ronnie wins it. This, Ronnie wins it this year, having not played all season. Fantastic. Well, plenty more snooker to come. Thanks for your company, Neil. I know you've got plenty of work to do between now and the end of the tournament. That's it for today, but join us again tomorrow when I'll have another member of the press corps go over what happens today. The drama continues in earnest here at The Crucible.